guys for being here tonight. How many of you are familiar with BDS? We all know. Okay, very good. I didn't see your hand. You're familiar, yes, okay, good. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the organization before we watch the film. Just very quickly, proclaiming justice to the nation's mission is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with Israel and the Jewish people against the rise of anti-Semitism. For those of you who follow anti-Semitism, there was an ADL study that came out last year where we saw an almost 70% increase in the United States of America. And where are most of those incidents occurring? On campuses, like this one, and secondary school campuses as well. So even in elementary school, middle school, high school, we see a rise of anti-Semitism. The anti-Semitism that we see today is actually being fueled by this issue. This is the debate on college campuses. Israel is an occupying force, and we should boycott all of these products. And that's what our documentary is going to be about tonight. Because as I watch the debate and the arguments go on about boycotting Israel, they're an apartheid state, they're oppressing the Palestinians, and the, the Palestinians are, are perceived as the underdogs, they're always throwing stones, and the Israelis have their military. So we decided, and of course I want to introduce my husband, award-winning producer, two-time Emmy award-winning producer and director, Stan Moore. We would not have, <laughs> we would not have all of these wonderful films and programs without his help. So I come up with the great ideas and then I put them to work, right? <laughs> it's a great partnership, trust me. But tonight we produced this documentary, we, we went to Israel and we wanted to speak with the Arabs. We wanted to ask them, are you being oppressed? Is Israel an apartheid state? Give us the evidence, because we saw the news. We were reading, we, we scanned the internet. We know what's being said about Israel, the false accusations. So we decided to go over there and, and interview some Arabs. So tonight you're gonna get to see those stories. You won't see these interviews and this information in the mainstream media. They won't tell you this part because it doesn't further their narrative and their agenda. So following the film, um, we're gonna have a time of Q&A because I wanna hear from you all. Um, this documentary has been shown before um, several groups, three focus groups across the country. And it's interesting the response that we receive from people. So I'm not gonna give it away because I wanna hear your response. Um, also housekeeping, the documentaries that we have available, as I said, they're award winning. And they're great tools to share with your family, your friends, about not just the issue of BDS, but Israel Indivisible, who has legitimate rights to the land of Israel. Um, and of course, we've got the Forgotten People, Christianity and the Holocaust. It goes into the history of Christian anti-Semitism. And then we have disinformation, the disinformation campaign to mislead. We talked about the textbooks, what we find in our, our textbooks in schools part of the disinformation campaign going on. Not just here in the United States, ladies and gentlemen, around the world. And I should also, as an aside, just let you know, I serve as a special envoy at the, at the United Nations for the World Council of Independent Christian Churches. So what I do tonight, I do there. Are you having any fun at all tonight? We need to be honest enough to realize we ain't the same. This whole idea of gender neutrality, we're all exactly the same. Because I know that men and women are different physically because I had a big sister. <laughs> physically different. <laughs> so there they were, Adam and Eve. And God said, Adam, let Eve not pick from the tree of good and evil. But what God was applying was, don't let her go shopping. <laughs> After all these years of working in comedy clubs throughout the country, I finally just decided I'm gonna come out. 
I'm a conservative and I'm a Christian and I'm proud. You have to be constantly being aware of what you believe because it can happen. If somebody tells you something long enough, if somebody shows you something long enough, you begin to accept it as truth. Friends, yes, we are a pluralistic nation. Yes, we have people from different cultures and genders, and we need to celebrate that, of course. But we were supposed to be out of many one. You were supposed to bring the elements of your culture to this country, share it with the rest of us, and then become an American. I'm not saying we did it right all the time. We had entertainers in this country that make a living off of putting this country down. I couldn't take it anymore. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a living lifting up the greatest country that has ever existed in the face of the stinking earth. This country better than the rest. God bless you, Indiana. Comedy for the other half of America. Thank you. <laughs> Great show, Brad. Great show. I'm uh, I'm J.D. Morris with uh, Christian Church Comedians. Oh, okay. Hey, I love your work, and I can book you in churches all over the country. Let's do it. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, we really don't have a Jewish comic in, uh, in, in Christian churches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Jewish. <laughs> Wait a minute. Your last name is Stein, right? Yeah. Well, how can you be a comic uh, named Stein and not be Jewish? Uh, your name's Morris, you Jewish? Well, no. How can you be a talent agent and not be Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> anyway, you'd be perfect for most of our churches, okay? Uh, just one question. I was wondering if maybe you could tone down the pro-Israel stuff a little bit, because, I mean, that's just not going to work for churches like PCUSA. Yeah, but that's what my show is. Are you kidding me? I hate political correctness in the USA. I fight against it. Right, right. But see, you've misunderstood because PCUSA stands for Presbyterian Church USA. What? And they're boycotting Israel. I got saved in the Presbyterian Church years ago. I mean, if there's one thing every Christian in America knows is we defend Israel. It's God ordained. <laughs> now, that's funny because... I mean, you know that Israel is an apartheid state. Hey, all I'm asking for is a little compromise here, man. Come on, work with me. What's it gonna hurt? Compromise, <laughs> compromise. Well, that's what Satan said. I'll tell you what, though. If you can compromise your fee, I'll think about it. Well, I don't really think that would be ethical. <laughs> exactly. He's gotta be Jewish. So now Christians are boycotting Israel? I wasn't expecting that. I mean, all my life I always thought Christians were supposed to back Israel and love the Jews. Yeah, maybe I was going to the wrong church. I've noticed that most of the world pretty much hates Israel. Maybe the big problem with our planet is Israel. Any comments on Israel? Tell them to get Israel. the hell out of Palestine. Ooh. These people are occupied. We could not, in good conscience, stand in the way of a resolution at the United Nations. We need to separate ourselves from Israel. It's a cancer on American foreign policy. You, we you, believe that Israel is an apartheid state. The American Studies Association voted to endorse a boycott of Israel's academic by territories, Palestinian land, that there is a horrendous example of apartheid. But, hey, what do I know? I'm not a Middle East expert. The thing is, though, I built my career getting to the truth. All I'm asking liberals to do is be liberal enough to let me have my point of view, because that's We what... have gotten too politically correct in this but country. But if you are offended by the truth, that's your problem. <laughs> Exposing hypocrisy and lies is, I guess, my thing. So, maybe it's time I find out for myself. He is boycott is well if you think that's just But unless you have a double standard you must Also boycott the rest of the nations Where allegations the human rights violations So, my journey begins A journey to discover the truth I gotta be honest, I, I really don't know a lot about Israel But yet I, I have a connection to that based on my faith That I feel I have a biblical obligation to understand Even an obligation to defend it 
Then I realized, well, if I want to be a truth teller, I have to be willing to examine this and see where did I get this idea? Is this something that someone taught me or does this have biblical clarity? Anyway, I'm going to need you, the viewer, to trust me just for a moment because I have no agenda. I'm a truth seeker, no matter where that leads, because remember, the moment I can say there is no truth, I can control you. I can create a fantasy world and demand that you live in it. Resistance is useless. I think it's the most evil country in the world, hated by everybody. They are occupiers, apartheiders. They are colonizer. They are worse than Iran and China and Syria and Rwanda combined. And worse than that, they have nukes. Of course, I'm speaking of Apparently we have a UN contingency here with us tonight. <laughs> UN contingency. And by the way, love you UN folks. I love how you police the world, nanny the world, make us all better people. Can you do me a favor? Pay your parking tickets. <laughs> smell it, smell it, now take it. That's for you. Everything apparently Israel does is wrong. They can't even make baseball hats right. They make the hat and they forgot to add the brim. That's why their men wear them 24 hours a day. They can't figure out how to take them off. What's going on? What's happening? It is, what is it on Israel that everybody hates? Could it be, could it be maybe because they're the chosen people? Yeah. Maybe it's that. They're the chosen people. Where are the chosen people? God loves us the best. Does he? He gave you a strip of land in the desert. If he loved you, why didn't he give you Hawaii? <laughs> You begin to hear little things that I've heard throughout my life and throughout history. I always had something to do with Jews. And sort of some sense that they didn't like these people because they were Jews. What have these people done? Here's what I heard. Jews rule the world. What? Do you know how many people are in the world? Seven billion. Do you know how many Jews would have to be around to rule the world? What, a billion? Two billion? Yeah. You know how many Jews there are? 14 million. Seven billion people. 14 million Jews. They rule the world. Those Jews know how to turn a profit, don't they? They're good. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. You know, everybody has a point of view. I want to find the truth and let people decide. So I decided, hey, I'm stupid. I'm going to have to go find experts a lot smarter than me and see what they have to say. I'm talking about real people, students, Jewish people, Israeli people, Palestinian people, Christian people, soldier people, Jewish comic people. You know, it's funny. President Clinton once said, you know, when they talk about the Jewish presence in uh, the Middle East and Israel, y Yasser Arafat was saying, you know, there was no Jewish presence here. And Clinton said, Jesus, wasn't he here? Even a Jewish rabbi comic. Jewish rabbi? Oh, yeah, that's redundant, sorry. Nevertheless, I got to travel. My journey took me to LA, New York, DC, and finally, Israel. Where are you from? Iran. Iran? Iran. All right, good for Shah, you. Shah. Yeah? Oh, yeah, okay. You. You're the Shah. Shah. I wonder what happened to you. Thank you so much. He ended up here. Thank you. And I do have to ask myself, after all these facts have been compiled, I gotta ask myself, and so should you. Why should we care about Israel? I mean, it's not affecting me, right? You have to care about Israel, because if you don't care about Israel, what's happening in Israel is coming to a theater near you. Yeah. Yeah. So, to get to the truth, we're gonna need to go back, way back. So your people, Palestinians, have been here how many? We've been here from the time for Adam and Eve. What is Israel? Who are the Jews? Who are the Palestinians? What is Palestine? So, around 3,000 years ago, in a nice little place called Israel. What gives them the right to try that again? Anyway, the Romans came in, threw some toga parties, and renamed the place. The Romans were so fed up with the manpower and material losses the Jewish people had caused them, they decided to basically get rid of the Jewish people. So they renamed the country from Judea. They said, let's give it a non-Jewish name to Philistia, named after the extinct Philistines. But it's amazing because their agenda was to do exactly what is going on today. The new version of Israel was set up in 1948, which made a lot of people very unhappy. Ah! Oh, 
the UN partition was very friendly to the Palestinian people, offering them equal treatment, equal land, political rights that, that actually would have maybe helped them to form a state. Well, the amazing thing is every nation is allowed its country except the Jews. Jews lived in Jew land called Israel 3,000 years ago. Oh, so we are the bad ones. I'd love to sit and discuss this with you, but I'm short on time. Yeah! Oh! Oh! We settled here for hundreds of years! Good point. Uh, none of my ancestors ever stepped foot in this land. No, you're right. Hey, Israel faced four major wars that they had no chance to win and multiple terrorist attacks, and the Jews haven't budged. In fact, they keep winning more land somehow. Can we ask why Israel wins all the time? Because they've won every war they have to. If they hadn't won every war, they wouldn't exist. I mean, they, you can't go eight and one and be Israel. As a byproduct of a war we didn't start called the 1948 war, there was, a, there was a line drawn called the Green Line. And two countries that had no right to be in here seized pieces of territory. Egypt seized the Gaza Strip, and Jordan seized what we call, everyone calls the West Bank. And people don't get this either, that Israel is 20% Arabs. Everyone thinks the Arabs are all living behind barbed wire and fences. But Israel itself, within the internationally recognized boundaries of Israel, is an Arab population, Israeli Arabs. People are shocked to hear that. And they're Israeli citizens. They have the same identity card that I have. They have the same rights. They vote. Are there issues, social issues, minority issues? Yeah, but it's not apartheid. Shut up, you miserable bloody Romans. No sense of humor. Oh. As we discovered, the Romans hated the rebellious Jews. I mean, <laughs> I guess those pesky Jews didn't enjoy whippings, floggings, and crucifixions, even though they were free. Shut up, you Jewish turd. Why are you calling Jewish? I'm not Jewish. I'm a Samaritan. Thus, they got so ticked off that they renamed the place Palestine. Now, this included Israel, Judea, and Samaria, basically anywhere a Jew lived. Then, in 70 AD, they said, enough is enough, and kicked out any and every Jew they could find. Money pulling your leg? It's a joke! So now, just who exactly are the Palestinians? Were they called Palestinians then? I don't even know what they were called. We are all, well, the Canaanites. Okay. This is the land of Canaan, and Canaan is an Arabic word, and... Uh, and the old no, Palestine, is Palestine a, 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 an Arabic word? I don't know the difference. Well, Palestine, is, it's, well, it may be, it's thousands, of, it's thousands of years old, you know. After the Romans renamed the place Palestine, everyone's driver's license said Palestinian, right? I mean, the Jews, the Arabs, the Democrats, everyone. Actually, for the next 1,500 years or so, it was the Jews, not the Arabs, who were called Palestinians. Now, here's the strange part. Jews, who had lived there since birth, suddenly were no longer Palestinians. Only the Arabs were. But what's in a name, right? There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. Did you know that there have been more United Nations resolutions condemning Israel than every other nation on the earth combined? What? <laughs> I'm afraid they'll find our humor very, very dry. <laughs> So I went to meet with some important UN people. What do you got? I mean, first of all, the UN as an organization in general does a lot of good work in the world. When we're dealing with the General Assembly, for instance, it's basically become the, the, th the thrashing ground for Israel. I think that the UN became one of the biggest corrupt organizations around the world. The UN Human Rights Council gets together and immediately at every session always begins by condemning Israel, automatically. So the UN is not an objective player in the, in, in the Middle East at all. But if, if you really care about human rights, look at Syria. What are, you, what are you obsessing with us for? There's hundreds of thousands of people being killed there, and you're silent. Much of the world has signed on to say and agree that Israel has breached international law as far as an occupying nation, so on and so forth. So if Israel has, in fact, broken an international law, well, let's um, sue them. <laughs> That's the American way, right? Huh? Israel's occupation is completely lawful. Uh, any country is entitled to occupy an enemy country that is using its boundaries to attack. Well, there's a military presence in the West Bank that ensures security and that ensures that, that you know, buses don't begin blowing up again in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv, which was a reality not that many years ago. To argue that the settlements or the occupation caused terrorism is to get the facts backwards. It's terrorism that causes the continuation of the occupation. Israel's not a perfect place. They make mistakes every second of every day, as every country, every person does. The 
morals of Israel, I think, transcend any mistakes they make because they're in the right, from my perspective, on all those things. Where is the beef? If you're going to be an occupier, hey, might as well throw in a little apartheid. <laughs> it's part of the fun of being an occupier. You get to apartheid people. Do you understand? Apartheid went from the womb till the tomb. Couldn't even take a dump in the same bathroom. People say Israel's an apartheid state, but I can't relate to that baseless hate. It's not really fair to try and compare a racist regime with the war on terror. Using common sense against violence, Israel had to build up the border fence. And if you think that's apartheid, it's because you don't know what apartheid really was. And here's what I found interesting. 1999, Miss Israel was an Arab. And then they put one of the Arabs on their Supreme Court. And 76 of them are in Congress. What I'm getting at is apparently when it comes to apartheid, Israel sucks. <laughs> they, for, for people that rule the world, you'd think they'd do a better apartheid, don't you think? All they do is just use their thuggery against people. And when I think thug, I think rabbi. I don't believe that Israel is an apartheid. I was in South Africa for five times, and I went to the Museum of the Apartheid in Johannesburg, and what I saw there never ever been appeared between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We have a full cooperation. If you will go to the hospitals, you will find an Arab doctors if you will go to the universities, you will find an Arab academics. And no doubt that by considering Israel as an apartheid, this is another way how to increase the anti-Semitism around the world. As a member of the South African parliament, and in the name of millions of my fellow black citizens of that country, we know what apartheid really was. And I therefore ask those in the United States, Europe, and anywhere else in the world who charge Israel with practicing apartheid to please stop doing so. You are damaging the truth. You are damaging any chance for peace in the Middle East. And most of all, you are destroying the memory of the real apartheid. There is absolutely no analogy between Israel and apartheid South Africa. And apartheid South Africa, a small number of whites dominated the country. Blacks couldn't vote, had no access to the judiciary, were selectively uh, executed. Um, whereas in Israel, Arabs vote, uh, they serve on the Supreme Court, they serve on universities. Yes, there is an occupation, a military occupation. And if you want to see what it looks like to end the occupation, look at Gaza. And Gaza, the occupation ends and thousands of rockets and terror tunnels are built from Gaza to kill Israelis. International law does not require a country to commit suicide. It doesn't require a country to give up an occupation as long as there is a belligerency. This is an apartheid and life. There's no like toilets like in Jim Crow South, whites only, Jews, Arab, that kind of stuff. No, you don't have that. It doesn't exist. And I'm not saying it's a perfect system. I'd be lying if but I said But at least it's being honest. I mean, that's what we're trying. Right. And I don't know if you're aware of this, mm -hmm. but Israel is an apartheid state. A what? Apartheid state. What does that mean? You don't know what that means? No, I don't know what that means. It just means that they are, don't allow Palestinians to eat yogurt unaccompanied. But my family, uh, uh, there was a long journey from Ethiopia to yes. Israel. Yes. There was in Sudan, yes. in a Muslim uh, place. They sacrificed a lot, mm. a lot in their life to come to Israel. To come here, yes. Yeah. Well, so you then can vouch for the fact that there is no apartheid. That is something that is has been said but isn't true. No, it's maybe more no, of a disparaging no, no, term used against you, but it's no, not true. No, there are not apartheid in Israel. Nothing. Want to know your proof that it's not an apartheid state? Please. Okay, you want to know the proof? Is yeah. the elections. Because there's an Arab party. Okay, there's a party just for Arabs. Mm -hmm. And that party finished third this year in the elections because they have equal vote, right? and they could have won the election. Anybody who still believes in apartheid, is they're only saying it because they hate 
Jews, mm -hmm. and they will keep. This is anti-Semitic. This is complete anti-Semitism. I have to be fair. If the Arabs were in the same place as Israel, if they had the weapons that Israel have, do you think they'll let the Jews live and have voting rights and have that? They would have erased them from the face of the earth. So you got to give credit. Do, is it apartheid? In the, no, it's not. It's not. Is there's a little discrimination between yeah, you know what, uh, an Israeli citizen uh, who's Jewish and an Arab? Uh, yeah, but I mean that comes with the territory, with the situation. Like I personally would rather live under an Israeli government than live under a Muslim government. And there was a real truth there: security lines and things called checkpoints. Well, they got to go through security lines, long lines. That's it. That should be if you got to wait in line <laughs> to go into a really great country. Have to take your shoes off. Oh, that's going too far. <laughs> you get asked nasty questions like, uh, "Did you pack this bomb to bag yourself?" It's not an apartheid state. Yes, you have separated territories. You have now a wall separating, you know, in Gaza, in in the West Bank. But the purpose of this wall wasn't to separate out people f f based on human rights. It was to stop suicide bombers from coming through. And it pretty much made the number of people who can carry out these large operations, it, it diminished them. It, it really reduced them. Does it inconvenience the Palestinians? Absolutely. By the way, you always see the pictures of the 40-foot high concrete wall. That's 3% of the security barrier. Fact, 97%, and it's not even built around everywhere yet. It still isn't completed. 97% of it is a chain link 10 foot high fence with electronic sensors designed to like, light up if someone cuts or crosses it to keep infiltrations out. Every country's first priority is the security and safety of its citizens. So if it's a question of inconveniencing our Palestinian neighbors versus having my children be blown up on a bus, what person in their right mind would say no barrier. Despite the oppression and apartheid, many Palestinians have achieved a, a living status greater than many in the world. Seems to me if there was such great oppression and apartheid that there would be no success or riches or ability for Palestinians to move up. But yet, that's not what I found. My house is right over there. Mm -hmm. Many other Palestinians I spoke with saw no apartheid whatsoever, and they were openly happy to live in the Jewish state. עכשיו המצב, כאילו, אני לא יכול להגיד משהו על מה שקורה, זה רק מי שיכול להגיד על זה, רק שאנשים שהם בממשלה, או שלנו או של ישראלים, הם יכולים להחליט בדבר הזה. אנחנו סך הכל רוצים לחיות. Can he quickly tell us why his grandfather uh, wanted to help the Jews? אצלנו בקוראן זה כתוב, אנחנו ויהודים. In the Quran, in the Quran it says. זה בני דודים. These are our cousins. ישראלי ערבי, פלסטיני, אתה, אתה אה, חושב שההתנהגות שאתה מקבל, נגיד שאתה הולך בכביש, שאתה הולך לבית חולים, זה אחרת מיהודי? אחלה, אחלה, אני הייתי בתל השומר שנה וחצי, הייתי כמו בן שלהם. אוקיי. התייחסו אליי אחלה. אז אתה לא, לא מרגיש הפרדה? לא, מה פתאום? מה פתאום? קיבלו בי אחלה, מ-0 עד מיליון. אוקיי. לא הרגשתי בכלל, שנה וחצי, אפילו החולים שהיינו... היינו יושבים ביחד, מדברים ביחד. יהודים וערבים. עשר, עשר, ממש לא ראיתי שום... כל אחד יכול להגיע שהוא רוצה. למה? הנה המדינה נותנת לכולם ללמוד, לא? אז יאללה, תהיה, תהיה רוח דין, תהיה מורה. אוסרים עליך, אפילו בתפילות. מפריעים לך? לא. אנחנו מפריעים חמש פעמים ביום. קוראים אללה אכבר חמש פעמים ביום. אף אחד לא מפריע. לכן מי שרוצה להגיע, הוא יכול להגיע. ומי שלא רוצה, אז הוא מאשים את הממשלה, הוא מאשים את המדינה. Many, many of Muslims around the, the world and around the Arab world, they are afraid to talk and afraid to, 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 to say we support Israel. And they said uh, we want to move to Israel, we want to live in Israel. Because Israel is the only democracy state in, in, the, in the Middle East. We have the all rights. The Arabs have the all rights in Israel. And mm. we want to, to be in Israel. Show me the money. <laughs> Over the last 21 years, the international community has, okay, ready, given over $31 billion to the Palestinian Authority as humanitarian aid. They've received more money in donations for humanitarian needs than any other people 
ever on the face of the earth. Now, the exciting adventures of Faxman, a strange little visitor from another planet where they tell the truth. How bizarre. Funny you should bring up those uh, pesky facts, Brad. A mind-boggling amount given could have rebuilt Europe after World War II 20 times over. By now, every Palestinian should have a two-car garage and two cars. Well, it's reported that when Arafat died, he had over, like, 2.4 billion in the Swiss bank account. And now it's estimated that Abbas is worth almost a billion dollars. And the head of Hamas is now worth over two billion dollars. Ah, I guess crime does pay. Plus, a recent report found that the Palestinian Authority is paying terrorists in Israeli jails some five million dollars a month. Yes, each is making three figures and getting full dental. And I always thought suicide bombing was a dying business. Sadly though, not a dime of that dough has gone to into building a hospital or a school. But they do have some lovely tunnels in Gaza. We come in peace. Maybe, maybe we should try it. Two-state solution. Maybe that's what it takes. Maybe if we just let everybody have half and half, we'll all get along. Jewish people are smart. They said, well, we'll try it. But we're going to give a test run first. Let's start off with Gaza. <laughs> The dude minds. This will not stand, you know? This aggression will not stand, man. So you think about if you grew up looking over the hill and your dad saying to you, we hate them, we hate them. What do you mean make peace with them when you're 30 years old? Yeah. I grew up hating them. I don't know why I hate you, but I do, and I want you dead. Now, it's been said that Arabs don't hate Jews because of Israel. They hate Israel because of Jews. I mean, where else does a mother celebrate the death of her child to kill Jews? I had somebody said to me today, uh, you know, I think the Israelis' main problem is not Hamas. I think it's world opinion. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I think if you live there, <laughs> you know, your main problem is I might get bombed when I go to the dry cleaners. I think that's a, a little more it's important than do people threat, like yeah. me. It's for every peaceful Palestinian that just wants to be left in peace, and they're out there, there's some potential terrorist that wants to leave them in pieces. and then we ask this question and you know what maybe it's unanswerable is peace possible there is a two-state solution even feasible the two-state solution is not only feasible, it's necessary and inevitable. The problem, Palestinians won't sit down and negotiate. The Israelis have offered to negotiate with no preconditions. Why won't the Palestinians sit down and negotiate? Because of the BDS movement. Because they think they're winning on university campuses. They think they're winning in the court of public opinion. They think they're winning in Europe. And they fool themselves into thinking they'll get a Palestinian state without having to make the difficult compromises that statehood will require them to make. For a president to be sitting in Washington, D.C. and saying, go back to your 67 borders in Israel, how about you live there and try to defend an indefensible border, nine miles wide? So take a look at human rights now, right? And we understand that there are many issues facing the Palestinians with that. Let's take a look at just the government. Who would govern? We look at Gaza, there's Hamas, but Hamas is a recognize terrorist organization. And that's bad. Well, I mean, if people don't want to be blown up in the streets, okay. I guess so. Every time people tried to come in to destroy them, they couldn't be done, almost like it was providential. So there's a new idea now. I know how we can destroy them. We'll call it BDS. If you don't know what BDS stands for, remove the D. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? I get it, I get it. You guys don't like our country. Yeah. 
But BDS is this idea, this thought, this, uh, this concept that we're going to boycott, divest, and sanction. What it means is this boycott. We will not buy any goods from Israel. Divest. We will not invest in their technology or their thoughts. And sanction. They must be punished for having the audacity to be in the Middle East and be a democracy. That has got to stop. Yeah. <laughs> How <laughs> audacious of those folks. And if you want to play the boy cut, divest, and sanction game, it's quite easy. I'll let you play right here now. If you really want to play this game, it's really easy. Just go ahead and reach in your pocket and get your cell phone, throw it into a new manila envelope. Then find your laptop, stick that in there too. And every other technological advice that's at the cutting edge of technology, just shove it into a manila envelope and send it to me. God's coming, Brad's taking care of BDS Comedy Central because I'll take that stuff and I'll use it. What I'm getting at is this. If you really want to punish Israel and show what a great humanitarian you are, you got to go back to the Stone Age. But hey, dude, boycotts against Jews is not news. In the 1930s, a wacko guy with a funny little mustache began a full boycott against all the Jews in his country. One night in 1938, the boycott exploded into a full-blown pogrom as over 1,000 synagogues were burned and over 7,000 Jewish businesses were destroyed or damaged. While on vacation in Germany, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem met with Hitler and took some lessons in Jew-hating. So in 1945, just after the war, the Arab League issued its first formal boycott of Jewish businesses in the Middle East. This boycott had various levels of success until like the late 1990s. Now the latest boycott was launched in 2005 by over 170 Palestinian NGO organizations. Ah, uh, the BS, yeah, uh, BDS movement. That means that the BDS became another new organization who want to gain also money and power on the suffer of the Palestinians. What we're talking about here is the BDS movement. What does that stand for? Bigoted double standard. I am a liberal Democrat. Uh, I support Israel because I'm a liberal. The BDS movement is not a liberal or progressive movement. It, BDS violates all the progressive and liberal values that we stand for. BDS is collective punishment. So the BDS movement is immoral and illiberal. We're building world-leading innovation. We're not this you know, murderous, like genocidal. That's not, you gotta realize this is the same country. People don't realize that. You know what's funny, funny about the BDS movement? Uh, yeah, if, no. you if you can find the funny, are, you are a good uh, man. A lot of the recent cancer cures are coming out of Israel. Really? You gotta boycott them. Okay. Uh, and and uh, a lot of other healthcare things, like the, they're very advanced in, 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 in robotics and things, getting people who are paralyzed to walk and things. So you got to boycott that. Okay. So we got to keep people yeah, paralyzed yeah, with cancer. Yeah, yeah cancer. And then you and, can and throw away your cell phone. Okay. And, <laughs> and you'll be fine with boycotting Israel. Okay. Sadly, the very people that the BDS is supposed to help are being hurt. And in the end, it's going to make it harder for them to support their own families. In 2015, due to BDS pressure, SodaStream closed its factory and nearly 500 of the company's Palestinian workers lost their jobs. If this area will over to the Palestinian and this factory will be closed, what will happen with her and her friends? She said uh, she will die. No, no work, no money, nothing. No. The objective evidence demonstrates that many benefits have accrued to the Palestinians, including political nationalism. Remember, the Palestinians never regarded themselves as a people in 38. They went to the Peel Commission and said, we're not a people, we're part of southern Syria. All right. Intifada, Intifada! Intifada, Intifada! Intifada! Long live Intifada! It's on campuses now. You can apparently get a letter now in anti-Semitism. <laughs> Because you see it on campuses. They actually have an apartheid week. What happened to the good old days when you went to college so you could study and drink? <laughs> Too much, in my opinion, is moving into the anti-Jewish uh, field in which students on campuses are being threatened, not because they're pro-Israel or pro-Zionist, but because they're Jewish. And I think this is one of the major dangers of the BDS. You know, yeah, you know, people think the Jews are not tough. I happen to be a very tough Jew. I fear nobody. <laughs> the only tough Jews are in Israel. In Israel, the Jews are tough. Oh, yes. I saw them. I thought they were Puerto Ricans. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate Jew, Jackie Mason. The kids in the college campuses, all they know is they have a great life and they hope the Palestinians are suffering. 
They don't even look to it to find out why the Palestinians are suffering, or even if they are suffering. Right. The truth is they're not suffering, but they need a cause. You love to have a cause to prove to yourself what you're, that you're a great humanitarian. Okay. So they invented a cause that doesn't exist. Students who are supportive of Israel have a legal right to safety, safety and security of their physical being. Violent demonstrations are not protected by the Constitution. Incitements to violence are not protected by the Constitution. Palestinian students on campuses across the country have built together a network of other oppressed peoples, self-defined. Those people then have taken on, like I said, the narrative of Israel being the great oppressor in the world. And it's actually having an impact, a scary impact on college campuses. You know, being against Israel uh, you know, has become the cool thing to do. I go to the Kent State University. Um, there's a professor there that calls his students his little jihadists. Um, he's on a terrorist watch list, actually. They were screaming Antifada, Antifada, and by the end of it, there were three Israeli flags that were just stomped on. Anti-Semitism has definitely affected my college career, whether it be the, the swastikas that were drawn on our mailbox or our anti-Semitic president of the student body. There are people running for political office that are, are running on campaigns of, with Jews you lose. There was about 800 of them on one side, and there was about six of us on the other side, and 50 of them crossed over the road and actually, like, got on their faces, started yelling, like, uh, kill the Jews, Hitler was right, and started saying, like, baby killer and stuff, and then we just started kind of getting attacked. Like, I, was, I had a concussion, my sister was punched in the face, grabbed uh, by the hair and pulled to the ground. Um, my mom was punched in the stomach and pushed to the ground. The group that actually hosted that rally is actually a group on our campus. So are you now, nervous on campus now? Yeah, walking around campus, I actually, I'm not going to lie, I do fear for my life. This year, I've come back. Um, some of my Orthodox friends, he won't wear a keep anymore. Like, he always wore a keep. And the first thing he said is, like, why do you not have your keep on? He goes, I'm afraid to walk around with that on. At UMBC, it's a lot of hate rhetoric going on about free, free Palestine. Go back to Israel, you effing Jews. We're threatened as Jews on campus. We are, first of all, not even recognized on campus because we're a Jewish fraternity. It's every day. It's not a big deal. It doesn't show up in the newspapers because it's to be expected. I felt like our campus was poisoned by, by both anti-Semitism, but also just a a sort of dark level of, of hatred. One of my best friends uh, was walking to class and she was spit on by another, another student simply because he saw that she was wearing a Jewish star around her neck. Anti-Semitism, you know, uh, hatred of, of the Jewish people of Israel is real. I think it was blessed are the cheesemakers. Historically, Christians have played a vital role in supporting Israel. And if they turn away, well, what will be the fate of this tiny nation? Most of the mainstream denominations dumped on Israel and the Jewish people years ago. The growth of replacement theology tells many Christians that the Jews have no right to Israel and no promise from God. For centuries, churches have taught their people that the Jews killed Christ, that the Jews lost their place in God's purposes, that they are no longer uh, the chosen people and that we have replaced them. The scary thing is to see so many evangelicals now joining in on the hatred from Christ at the checkpoint Mark Green, more and more are turning their backs on Israel. Perhaps the last five years or six years or so, a new gathering of evangelicals known as Christ at the Checkpoint has been targeting especially younger generation Christians with a falsehood, with the deceptive teaching. In the Bible, in the New Testament and the Old Testament, say me, is this land is named Israel and Jerusalem and Nazareth and the Afro Heb Hebrew names. And the land, this is Hebrew land, Jewish land. As Pope Francis has said, you can't be a Christian and be an anti-Semite. The old covenant was never revoked. And Nostra Aetate very explicitly rejected this idea of the collectivization of guilt that somehow Jews were all responsible for the killing of Christ then and then fast forward into 2017. You'd have to be really a marginalized Catholic to entertain that kind of insanity. It's written that God has not finished with the Jewish people, but that he will restore them to their land. If the church in America uh, gives up Israel, America will collapse. America will come under the judgment of God. Wow.
That is some okay. serious words, uh, my brother. No, no, no it's, uh, the Bible says it. I didn't, that's not Jack's words. In 48 hours of last week's quake, two 747s arrived in Port-au-Prince from Israel. One loaded with medical supplies and the other with personnel. Am I perfect? No. Do I know everything? Uh-uh. But I didn't just listen to one side or the other. I went and talked to them. I went to visit their, their places. I went to watch the technology that these people are putting together. That's unbelievable. Cutting edge, drip irrigation, where they literally have created irrigation that does not waste all the water, drips right into the plants one drop at a time and creates a harvest bigger than anybody has ever had. And only Jews would have thought about how to squeeze water. <laughs> You know what I found out is despite how much they're hated, Israel and the Jewish people continue to make the world a better place to live. Israel does great work in so many areas. Uh, what's going on in Israel and the tech scene is unparalleled, unprecedented in the world. It's, it's unbelievable to see a country the size of New Jersey that has, you know, hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of, of startups that are truly changing the world. Many of the technologies that we're all using you know, we carry around in our pockets or on our computers or are built here in Israel. I can't think of any big, large, you know, tech corporation that doesn't have presence here. From, you know, Google, Microsoft, Apple, AOL, Yahoo, they're all here. Israel, Israel exports clean water technology. Israel, Israel, for instance, is the number one recycler of water in the world. Like this tiny nation of eight million people. That's, they're, they're green. I would stick my neck out to say that Israel is one of the greenest nations in the world. I challenged Stephen Hawking's. Mm -hmm who supports the BDS movement, to debate me. He can't accept the debate because the machine that he uses to talk with was manufactured in Israel. So he can't have a debate about BDS, supporting BDS, while using techniques that were developed in Israel. If people really want to support the BDS movement, they have to give up many of the pharmaceuticals that save lives. I take everyday pharmaceuticals that are manufactured and developed in Israel. So the BDS movement is hypocritical. Nobody is going to boycott Israeli products that help them and make their lives better. I think there's no doubt that Israel exists today because there are skills, there are values and there are ideals in Israel that should be shared with the world because of what they bring. That's part of this world and that wants to be part of this world. We have a certain duty to really show and share what we know how to do. And right now we're working in 17 countries at all times. I think what drives us as Israelis and makes us um, successful as humanitarian aid uh, workers is that we're innovative, we care about people, and we have the skills to provide the assistance. And this is something that's very unique. The Jewish value of tikkun olam and about giving to the other, it's something that's already rooted into our history, it's, it's something that is part of us. This is a fulfillment of prophecy, and even if you aren't religious, this is a political miracle. Who would have thought yeah. that a people would have climbed out of Holocaust camps, literally, with literally the rags on their back, and yet and they would move to the middle of the desert, in the middle of the Middle East, with zero natural resources, and today you're looking at one of the great developed countries in the world. If you're not realizing the miracle of this story, you're missing out on one of the great epic sagas of humanity. What could it be about this small sliver of land? Because that's what the people say. Maybe that's what they do. They invade other countries and take over. Never. They are 0.001% of the entire land mass of the world. They are the most historically documented persecuted people group on the face of the earth. And they finally said, we're just going to find a place that God gave us a few thousand years ago, predating anybody else, and live here so we can be safe for once and for all. I am saying there's nothing wrong with that. That's just common sense. Enough is enough. If you hate Jews, you hate Israel. This is a humanitarian problem that has to stop. Israel deserves to stand, and we will defend them. God bless you, folks. Good night. So once again, 
I just have to ask myself, as should you, after all these facts have been compiled, why should we care about Israel? I mean, will its survival affect me? And with all they do and provide for the world, is hitting Israel the BDS really a good idea? In time, it will affect Israel. And ultimately, you and me. And oh yeah, the whole world. And boycott Israel if you think that's just But unless you have a double standard you must Also boycott the rest of the nations Where allegations of human rights violations We're not perfect, but if you think we're the worst First take a look at the rest of the earth Don't pick and choose to pick on the Jews Pick up the paper and read the news Boycott Chile because they deny abortions Even if the mother would die And boycott Brazil where the brutal Police kill thousands of people to keep the peace. Boycott Venezuela. Closer inspection shows that the socialists stole the election. Boycott Colombia. Putting out the lights of anyone who fights for union rights. A boycott Ecuador for stealing the lands of indigenous people. BDS is part of what I call the fake left. The arrogant and ignorant who see themselves as righteous are just blowhard liars. The joy that I have known of being welcomed among brothers and sisters in a Jewish land. And I will always come back to this blessed and heroic place, which for me will always be home. So I thank you very much for this honor. We're not perfect, but if you think we're the worst First take a look at the rest of the earth Don't pick and choose to pick on the Jews Pick up the paper and read the news I'd like to hear some thoughts about what you think watching the information. Good for you. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. But what do you guys think when you see this? This is not. I mean, did, did anybody know this information before? Is this the first time you saw this? Of course. And who's been to Israel lately? Oh, two years ago. We have two? Two years ago? Mm -hmm. That's lately. Yeah. So what do you guys think? I mean, you saw the Bassam Ed, who's one of my favorite. He was one of my favorite people in this film because he is a Palestinian human rights humanitarian um, rights person, leader. And he even called the BDS movement, you didn't hear because we cut that out, but he called it in this interview, bullshit. Excuse my French. But he, what did he say? You remember in the film, they use this as a way to make money. Look at Yasser Arafat. I was at the, um, I'm working on a project at the United Nations, it's a conference, to talk about the, the global implications of boycotting, divesting, and sanctioning Israel. Will it hurt Israel? Or will it hurt the Arabs that supposedly the United Nations wants to help? I was, um, I was amazed in speaking with these two ambassadors who finally said, after talking about the $31 billion given to the Arabs since 1994, where has the money gone? If you were to stand on a hill over the top of Balada refugee camp, which is in one of the Palestinian controlled areas, and you look down and you look at all the territory that they, the, the Arabs have access to, and you see this one little camp where people are living in squalor, they're living in close, um, uh, close confines, and they've been living that way for three generations. And then you look over to the left, and you see all this open land. Why didn't they take the money, the $31 billion, and invest in apartment buildings to take the, give these people some dignity, put them in nice housing, invest the money in the economy, give these people jobs? No, they don't do that. Why? Because if they do that, then they have nobody to point to to continue their diatribe. What are other thoughts? Yes, Brandon. Uh, I hear several times in the movie that says that Israel is not an apartheid state. 
I would beg to differ. Um, seeing as how Israeli citizens can't even go into checkpoint A, no. uh, they are forbidden by the law to go into the Palestinian Authority territory. Mm -hmm. It's apartheid there. Very good. Good assessment. You're right. That is apartheid. Yes. I was just saying, why would uh, people who push to boycott Israel not push to boycott China because there's the occupation of Tibet and there's human rights violations. They violate their so every civil liberties they just can't go. You make way too much sense. You should be at the United Nations. <laughs> that or you should run for office. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But why is this the only narrative that we hear? Why don't we hear this? Why didn't we hear these facts? Why isn't that part of the narrative? Again, it doesn't fit. It doesn't enable them to continue to take billions of dollars. But these two ambassadors said to me when I said, where is the money? They admitted, OK, fine. So there is some corruption. But we feel, for the most part, the money is doing a good thing. They use it to pay the terrorists to blow up the Israeli soldiers. Or they just pocketing it for themselves and they, putting their wife the in prisoners. London so she can live Yasser Arafat's wife. They, they pay the prisoners once they go to prison. They yep. pay them a salary, especially if they've blown up Israeli citizens. Yep. Yeah, you saw the, the money. $5 million. That's outrageous. And so, of course, our president now is, is reining in that funding and saying, uh, we're not going to do this anymore. We're going we're gonna to look at our investment. Because as a good businessman, we want a good return. Obviously, we haven't gotten a very good return there. Other comments, thoughts, something that you learn new. Yes? I actually have a question. Are you finding that the BDS movement is picking up steam? And more and more, I have to tell you, I was very disturbed. And I think maybe you guys, because you're younger, I want to say it was the singer Lord that, that just yeah. came yeah. to the concert in Israel. Mm -hmm. Is that, and she gave it the reason because they're not occupying I mean, it breaks my heart, but yeah. these are like young people mm -hmm. that are getting involved in this and listening to the rhetoric. Yeah. I mean, it, it pains me personally because I'm a very big Pink Floyd fan. And Roger, yeah. Roger Waters. Roger Waters. is unfortunately very involved in this BDS movement. I used, I used to be a, b a big Pink Floyd fan. That was back in my day. And you guys are getting to enjoy it. But unfortunately, somebody who we admired his music we, we've been protesting his concerts across the country because they're peddling a lie. There's no basis in fact. So it's important for us to get the message out. Other thoughts, other things that you learned or things that disturbed you what you, of what you saw? Um, seeing like other college students, like their experiences and like that one person who said he got a concussion, someone punched his sister, like just really seeing like them burning the um, Israeli flag. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, like, what's wrong with you? And yeah. I mean, maybe in a bubble because Booker Cone is such a big Jewish community. Right. But I'm just like, wow. Like, if that happened here, it would just be horrifying to me. Like, I'd be so disgusted. It's interesting that you bring that up. Yeah. Because this university has had a reputation I know. of having <laughs> that. Obviously, <laughs> before you <laughs> came well, yeah. to the campus. Well, I remember my freshman year, it was like mm -hmm. a growing issue. Mm -hmm. With the SJP? Yeah, SJP. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, don't you even know. You had a lot of brothers with them. Mm -hmm. uh, their advisor was actually fired. I'm, I'm not sure if he got arrested, but. When was this? Um, two years ago. Okay. It was probably my freshman year as well. Because mm -hmm. um, in 2014, when I started, I was with Alice for Israel, the SJP used to come mm -hmm. up to us, we were tabling on the breezeway. Yeah. And they would always try to, like, to start stuff. and. Mm -hmm. They were kicked off campus for violence, but their advisor mm -hmm. actually was caught funneling money to Hamas. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So what do we do about it? This is your generation's battle now. This is where, I mean, look at how many of your colleagues, other students on other campuses, you bring up such a great point talking about hearing from the Jewish students and how they must feel on the college campuses. What are some other thoughts? Um, about the boycotts, I know you mentioned China and you mentioned Syria, but I think that around the world, in every part of the world, I mean, we can name countries mm -hmm. for hours. There are so many that you know, have human rights issues. 
issues. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're talking about boycotting Israel, which, similar to the United States, has, I mean, right. we're not perfect, but we have the best, I mean, human rights amongst, Record. Mm -hmm. amongst countries. I mean, if you look at all these countries around the world, and especially in the Middle East, you know, when there's violence, I mean, the human rights, they, they treat their own people horribly. Right. Yeah. Look at how they treat women. In the longer version of the film, we didn't have, um, we did a segment called The Tale of Two Cities. And I wanted to focus, how many of us in the room are Christian? And then Jewish, okay. I did A Tale of Two Cities. And as Christians, of course the Jewish community understands this, but as Christians, there are two cities in Israel that we um, relate to on a spiritual level. And that's Bethlehem, the, pla the birthplace of Jesus, and Nazareth, where he grew up. And we focused on those two cities because I wanted, try wanted to try to reach Christians to help them understand that Bethlehem used to be governed by the Israeli government. And in 1993, after Oslo, they gave up Bethlehem and they gave it to the Palestinian Authority. Since 1993, over 80% of Christians have fled Bethlehem. Why? The Palestinian Authority is in control. They don't have human rights violations, do they? Well, I can tell you a pastor and his father who pastored in Bethlehem, they're still there. They have a congregation. The father has been shot three times because he's a Christian. His congregation, as they walk to, to church services on Sunday, are stoned by the Arabs. So over 80% of the Christians have fled Bethlehem. And then you have Nazareth, a city we relate to. It's, a, it's the city that, Nazareth is a city that is governed by the Israeli government. And you have Christians, Jews, and Muslims all living together. Nobody's being persecuted there. Why? Palestinian Authority and the Israeli government. Where is the apartheid? Who is being persecuted? This is the issue, as I mentioned before we saw the film, this is the issue that's the driving force behind the anti-Semitism that we see today. And it is dangerous what is happening. We saw um, the in the, during the Holocaust, Hitler initiated a boycott and we look at some of the things that are going on around the world right now. We see the rise. It's the, uh, the ADL reported that there was a total global 86% increase in anti-Semitic incidents. You guys, this is 2018. Don't we get past this? Don't we get over this hatred? Why does it keep coming back? Why is it always targeting the Jews? Yes. They're successful. Yes. The world is jealous. But there is a scripture in the Bible for those of you who have spent time in Sunday schools, probably heard about Amalek. God said he would wage war against Amalek from generation to generation. And so we should expect to see a Haman or an Amalek rise up. And this is the new Amalek. BDS. We, if we care about our neighbors, if we care about our Jewish community, if we care about injustice, then this is what we have to stand against. Um, there was another thing that hit me was I was watching the film, you know, Israel's accused of being an occupying force. This documentary, Israel Indivisible, I want to encourage you guys to buy these films, have a movie night, even with Boycott This. Invite your friends over, have pizza, beer, watch the films, and then have a conversation. I'm sorry, beer? <laughs> Am I supposed to be saying that? Is everybody old enough to drink in here? <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a bad influence. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
<laughs> but hey, you know, <laughs> pizza and beer, it's a great combo when it gets everybody to show up, free food, right? We're in college. <laughs> Anyhow, this documentary, Israel Indivisible, makes the historical, archeological, legal, and biblical case for Israel's rights to the land. It gives you a whole overview of who has legitimate rights to the land. Of course, we've got boycott this up here, but there's plenty of material also for you all to take. Yes. So you mentioned earlier that you're working with state legislatures. Um, yes. So what's, what's been your response? What, what, have, what has been their response? Well, let's talk about our um, BDS resolution campaign. So back in 2015, we introduced a resolution in Tennessee to expose the groups like SJP, MSA on the college campuses because these kids are getting away with murder. They're allowed to, to have these events and roam free and attack students who have um, differing views than what they have. And um, the, um, um, we introduced the resolution in Tennessee to expose the groups. We worded that in the language. We ended up passing the resolution. Great response from the state legislature but we marketed it and we pushed it out to groups all over the country. Because, our, because we produce these films and we broadcast them globally, our audience is 2.6 billion people around the globe. We target Christians, but others um, also watch our films. So what happened when we, started la when we launched this anti-BDS resolution campaign, we have a total of 10 states that have passed the resolution Four states are in the process of introducing it. It's a statewide initiative across the country, but the goal with the resolution is to expose these groups on campus. Why are we focused on the state? Because it is the state legislature that governs education. Whether it's higher education, secondary education, it's not the federal government's job to oversee education on the state level. That includes the college campuses. These groups, like SJP, should not allow to be, to, to be operating. They should be shut down. Other uh, comments? Yes. Uh, one thing, uh, a lot of this I know because um, I follow uh, other organizations that have been raising awareness for this. Good for you. But the one thing that really disturbed me the most was they met in the film it was mentioned how a lot of Christians are now turning their back on Israel, and that was surprising. I'm glad you brought that up. So we're wi we are witnessing a resurgence of replacement theology and supersessionism within Christianity. And a lot of people say it's because of, again, BDS. Because what's happening is these groups like Christ at the Checkpoint that you saw, these supposed evangelical Christian leaders who are promoting this narrative that Jesus had more in common with the Palestinians. And some people even say that Jesus was a Palestinian. He wasn't a Jew. This is the, the craziness of what these people are promoting. But they are, they are pushing an agenda that is unbiblical. There's no basis in the text of scripture. But there has always been since the time, and that of course we cover in the forgotten people, Christianity and the Holocaust. We cover the issue of Christian anti-Semitism. Initially, in the early days of Christianity, Christianity was connected to the Hebrew roots of the faith. Jesus was a Jew. And in fact, if he, would have, if he was alive today, he would be considered probably part of the Orthodox sect of Judaism. And, and unfortunately, Christians are not taught that. Christians aren't taught that some of the early church fathers, as we became more gentilized and we pulled away from the Hebrew roots of our faith, that's when the anti-Semitism started to, to move in. You can read some of the early um, Christian fathers and some of their writings about what they said about the Jews. And they believe, these, those who, who adopt replacement theology and supersessionism believe that God is done with the Jewish people. God made a covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that covenant is eternal. It, do, it doesn't end because the Palestinians think it should. Yes? Didn't Jesus basically make a new covenant where he said basically no one comes to the Father except through me? Well, it's interesting that you bring up the new, if you bring the up... only Messianic Jews would be considered basically... Um, 
It's interesting that you bring that up because Yeshua said that he is going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. But what we have done within Christianity, and if we had a Bible study, I would love to come back and do a Bible study with you guys to show you some of these things, to teach you and connect you back to the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. Because God made a covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that covenant is eternal. He told Israel that he would sift Israel through a sieve, but not one kernel of her would fall to the ground. And one day, he's going to regather her. Where do, where do the Gentiles fall in on this? There are some great New Testament scriptures in um, Galatians 3.29. Paul, the Apostle Paul said that if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He told the believers in Ephesus, you who were once outside of the commonwealth of Israel, what is a commonwealth? It's a nation. You who were once outside of the commonwealth of Israel have been brought near because of Jesus' shed blood. So we are part of that, com that, um, that covenant. We're part of that, co that commonwealth. We do not replace the Jews. They are our older brother in the faith. And we are also warned by the prophets, and I say this to these, because I've called out these Christian leaders that have been promoting this heresy, because that's what it is, it's heresy. Because they can't substantiate their position biblically. They substantiate their position based on doctrine and tradition. And that's a very dangerous thing. We have to study the Bible from a Hebrew perspective because that's how the book was written and that's who it was written to. And those were the people who understood it. The Bible was translated into Greek. We were not to interpret it as Greeks. So that's your Bible study lesson for the week. <laughs> You know what? It's never too late to go back and study. It's one of my favorite history books. I love to study the Bible because when you study the scriptures and you connect them to modern day events, it comes to life. And you, I'm going to tell you, the Bible is, I, I always say that the Bible is a book written to Israel, for Israel, about Israel. It's the most exciting story because if you read an even um, the Smithsonian Institute, I love sharing this with you, and it's in one of the, it's in the Israel Indivisible documentary, but even the Smithsonian Institute, a secular group, or sec secular organization, stated that the Bible is the best book from antiquity because the people and the events actually occurred. That's the Smithsonian. But how often do we hear the Bible discarded and, and the content. Oh, well, you can't base what you believe on the scriptures, really. I mean, I, I tell these Christian leaders who are peddling this propaganda that God's done with the Jews that they can't substantiate their position. If they can provide those, the chapters, the books, the verses, then I'll stand down. I'll stand corrected. But I've been studying the Bible for 17 years now, and when I started to come to the understanding that God was not done with Israel, it changed because I had been taught that same belief system, that God was done with Israel and he was done with the Jews. So, any other comments? It's almost 9 o'clock, it's almost 10 to 9. This has been absolutely fabulous. You guys are a great audience. So I hope that you will consider purchasing. Again, the DVDs are only $10. Share them with your, with your friends. Have an, a movie night and have a conversation. Talk about these issues, you guys, even the information that you learned. Have a conversation. Have a book club. Pick a book. You know, there's two great books on BDS. Have a book club and bring everybody together. Read the book and then have a conversation about it because the only way we're gonna change the narrative, you know, your generation, you're, gonna, you're the up and coming leaders, we're counting on you guys, because my generation screwed up big time. <laughs> we're in this situation because of my generation, but thank God there's still people like us that are trying to hang on to what we can. But you guys have been a great audience. God bless you all, and thank you so much for being here tonight. <laughs>